Universities should be centers of debate. Universities should have a pluralism of opinion across the board in every subject. There should be no political litmus tests. There should be dissidents of all kinds. And students should be treated as young adults who are free and capable of dealing with the abrasions of daily life, protected by the ordinary protections of criminal and civil law, free within that. The Foundation for Individual Rights exists to defend uh, individual rights, including free speech, due process, freedom of religion, and freedom of conscience on college campuses. The mission of FIRE is to defend the individual rights of students and faculty members on campus and to arm students and faculty members with the information um, about their rights so that they can effectively defend their own rights on campus. We're a uniquely nonpartisan group. Our staff, our board of directors, really represents people from all across the political spectrum. FIRE is a nonpartisan organization. Um, that doesn't mean we're not ideological. We certainly do have an ideology, and that ideology is, is that of liberty. Um, FIRE tries to protect the liberty of everybody, conservative or liberal, green or libertarian, uh, you name it. Um, you have the right to express that. That's part of the foundational freedoms that America is based on. There's this general misconception that there's a right not to be offended, and that it's okay to punish students and faculty members for engaging in speech that offends someone, even if that speech would be entirely constitutionally protected. You don't have the right to not be offended. And we also say here at FIRE that if you've gone through four years of college without being offended or without having your beliefs tested, put to the test, that you should ask for a refund because you haven't maybe been engaged in the debate that's supposed to take place in this marketplace of ideas that's, that's the university atmosphere. The rise of speech codes came out of what something that everything everyone would agree was actually quite a positive development. You start having more women, more minorities, more openly gay students in college and universities. But instead of showing a bravery in the face of, of the, the, the tension that this might create and some of the debates that this might create, um, universities sort of flip, uh, completely flipped over their thinking uh, of the idea of free speech and uh, came up with, con uh, with, with academic theories of, of, of hate speech. That essentially, if you, it's a form of discrimination to say things that might be offensive to certain groups. We named uh, the University of Mississippi's general telephone policy our speech code of the month uh, back in the fall for saying that offensive language is not to be used over the telephone at the University of Mississippi and that all instances of, of, of the use of offensive language over the telephone um, were to be reported to the university police. The sexual harassment, um, the legal theory of which sort of was born in the 1970s, the idea is that it's, a, that it's a form of gender discrimination that's so severe and pervasive that you effectively uh, prevent somebody from um, uh, from earning a living or completing an education. Now, this idea is completely transmogrified into and, and married this idea of a general right not to be offended. And it's so badly misunderstood and so much abused that by 2003, the Office, Office of Civil Rights of the Department of Education had to come out with a letter of clarification saying harassment doesn't happen every time you're offended. Um, such a, and obviously, if that was what harassment was, that would, that would be the exception that completely swallowed the rule of free speech. Davidson College's sexual harassment policy uh, bans a wide variety of very specific things, including comments or inquiries about dating, which begs the question of how one actually would go about getting a date at Davidson without making any inquiries about dating. Kansas State University's sexual harassment policy prohibits, among other things, sex-related comments or gestures. Examples include sexual teasing, jokes, remarks, or questions, personal questions about sexual life, kissing sounds, howling and smacking lips, simulating sexual acts, facial expressions, doesn't say what kind of facial expressions, it just says facial expressions, winking, throwing kisses or licking lips, spreading rumors or telling lies about a person's sex life or performance, looking a person up and down, parentheses, elevator eyes. Elevator eyes, I'm not even really sure what that means. And when has it really become uh, the, the, the role of a university to, to so severely interfere with normal r relationships between students and college? Drexel ha University here in Philadelphia has a harassment policy that also, like Davidson, bans a lot of specific things, including 
uh, inconsiderate jokes and inappropriately directed laughter. Now, it doesn't define what inappropriately directed laughter is, but I would guess that it has something to do with laughing at inconsiderate jokes. Well, I tried to come up with a considerate joke, which is why did the blonde write TJIF on her shoes? Because she was very happy that it was Friday and she was looking forward to an evening out with her friends. That would be the considerate <laughs> joke. The real answer is because it stands for toes go in first, but that would be inconsiderate, so can't say that at Drexel. <laughs>